Peace, peace. What's going on? Welcome to the Pinoy Podcast. What's going on, everybody? I'm Toast Johnson. Yeah, today we got a very, very, very special guest, my brother, my leftover brother in arms. <laughs> but not only that, he's 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 legendary um, in his own status. You know, uh, highly respect this brother. Um, he's a he's an author, a scholar, a humanitarian, a martial artist a very wise man that you can learn a lot from. Um, and I'm definitely honored to have my brother Sunez here on the Pinoy podcast. Welcome, brother Sunez, welcome. Hey, peace, toast. Yeah, toast, my man, toast, man. It's great great to be here, man, build with you. Definitely, you know definitely, man. Long overdue, long overdue, yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. Definitely, man, but um, yeah, I wanted to definitely, uh, you know, rap with you, you know what I mean? Um, you know, and and uh, let, let you know my audience you know know about you the greatness you know if they don't know about you the greatness of of the things that you do and the, and the positive light and good energy that you you constantly spread <clears throat> it's, it's it's definitely inspiring and um i definitely want to infect uh you know my audience my growing audience to to that so definitely man but um you know basically let's start with you know kind of with the basic questions uh and 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 go from there um yeah like uh where you from bro yo i'm from sunset park brooklyn new york you know what i mean salute Via, salute Via puerto rico you know what i mean yeah. Ponce, you know for those you know asking the place specifically but yeah 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 definitely salute salute yeah. and um you know coming from brooklyn you know the brooklyn is is bigger than a motherfucker that's like the borough of, oh yeah um, yeah no doubt <laughs> nyc you know what i mean you know me coming from harlem you know we're a small fucking speck compared to uh to the massiveness of uh of brooklyn and so much culture in brooklyn and so many people in different culture in brooklyn brooklyn is definitely a a different world you know separate from uh from new york and definitely mm -hmm. sunset park you know what i mean so definitely salute um when did you uh, uh, want to get into writing? You know, um, writing is a big thing, you mm -hmm. know, uh, that you do. You can uh, explain to the audience um, that, you know, uh, uh, what you do and, and, and some of the projects that you've, you've written on and then expound on uh, what made you get into, uh, into writing. Well, you know, you know, I tweeted something yesterday and it kind of it kind of segs both you know where i'm from sunset park and how i write and i had said i had said this <laughs> i said my my brooklyn essence as a question my brooklyn essence mm -hmm. i said in my work progressively and overtly making journalism a hip-hop element with creative poetic shells and prose spines i chisel into articles spoken word podcasts and books you know i said i rep the shadowed unsung area of medina that means brooklyn not the heart of Medina, but the <clears throat> lettered lung, my Sunset Park. So, you know, I'm a five percenter, and the major places that the knowledge itself was taken into in Brooklyn is referred to as is as the heart of Medina. You know, Bed Stuy, and then those surrounding areas of East New York and Brownsville and whatnot. Absolutely. And I've been in those places, but I didn't grow up in any kind of respect around those places. You know, I grew up in Sunset Park, Brooklyn. So, you know, when you talk about the size of the borough um, and how it relates to hip hop, where I'm from, where I'm from relates heavily to how I got into hip hop because the way we were informed was what we see coming through the borough and then also what we see succeed outside, you know, whatever we see that succeeds. So, we, I don't see people from my neighborhood succeed at all in hip hop, but we all do hip hop. Right. And, and I don't see anybody from my areas of Brooklyn succeed in hip hop. And we're all separated, you know, we're all separated and, emph and emphatically and unfortunately um, through the divisions of gangs and stuff. So I, when I was growing up, the gods, God body, all of that kind of stuff was considered as different gangs. You know, I didn't really understand any of that when I was a kid you know, come from a, a neighborhood that had La Familia, Nieta, and other things, you know? And so there's just different different gangs. I don't, I don't really get that. But when I start listening to hip hop, 
hip hop isn't something I listened to growing up. It's something I really love the beats as cars pass by, but it's not something I, I do. I wasn't listening to music much as a kid, like as a, of my own choice. So what happens is I'm taught to be a writer as a child by my mother, you know, remembered in perfection, my old earth, you know, my mom. Mm -hmm. And she would have me write book reports and things like that. And, and, and really just emphasize that we have to learn how to write and speak as professionally as possible. Of course, though, because I loved hearing hip hop and more so as, as opposed to hearing hip hop, just hearing my brothers in the streets, the way they talk, the way they have this dynamic way of speech and it's a hip hop speech. So I'm like, there has to be a way that that, that, that is some style, style of art too, in the way right. that they're speaking. And right. it isn't with the formal. And I'm thinking as we go along that maybe we could master all of that, but I, I don't know anything. All we do is like what we see can be done. And what I mean by that is like in a Puerto Rican neighborhood that Sunset Park really was when I was a kid in the eighties. In the nineties, it becomes more Dominican and then more all Latin America by the end mm -hmm. of the thousands. But what happens is I, all I see is like what we might be able to do, you know what I'm saying? And that becomes movies like, like Beat Street, you know what I'm saying? And we see crazy legs and we see all the Boricuas battling and you get double takes because you're like, wow, that guy looks like he might be a cousin of mine. Like he looks mm -hmm. familiar to me, you know what I mean? Familiar. Yeah, he's from around right. the way, right. You know what I <clears> mean? <throat> and so that becomes something that becomes a big deal because you know I'm not from the Bronx, so I don't know all of the Puerto Rican MCs that aren't yelling out that they're Puerto Rican. So I don't know Tito, uh, the Fearless Four. I don't know, you know what I'm saying, uh, um, Prince Whip or Whip. I don't know any of that stuff. You right, know? right. Kid, I'm not really listening well. I don't listen well at all to music, you know what I mean? To mm -hmm. the lyrics, nothing. You know, all I care, all I hear is the beat. Right. And so we see breakers, so we do, we do that. And we do breaking, you know, and I'm nowhere near anything good, but it became right. a way of, um, understanding the style and every time that I write in the beginning I'm trying to capture the vibe that I had when I went into a battle you know what okay. I'm saying that feeling like what was it like to do hip-hop and so because I could only do writing when I finally make it to college and mind you I'm not much of a reader everything is by chore everything is by assignment right nothing voluntarily done the only reading I do voluntarily is sports reading you know, Sports Illustrated, right, sports right. biographies are the only books we get through that we're not supposed, we don't have to, you know what I'm right, saying? Right, right. And um, so I'm into sports, you know, ba uh, baseball, basketball, and football, but pretty much don't study anything else. And, you know, I I'm certainly not going to be a basketball player, which is my favorite sport. So I like, <laughs> uh, there's nothing. Right. <laughs> but in college, my old earth, again, she looks at me and she says, you know, you need to do something extracurricular. You know what I'm saying? And in my head, I'm thinking like, damn, I'm barely like even desiring to finish these classes, uh, let alone do something extracurricular in college. Right. But my twin brother, I have a twin brother, identical twin. Um, shouts to Manny. You know what I mean? Shout out. Peace. Yeah. Salute. Salute. He, he, he um, doesn't know it, but he starts my hip hop career because he's already at the college newspaper in CUNY's Baruch College. They have a tip newspaper called The Ticker. Mm. And so he says, why don't you write there? Because you could get in there because I'm already writing in there and, and I'll show you. By the time I, I go in there, he becomes the an editor of the arts and entertainment section. Wow. You know, him becoming cool. an actor eventually um, and a screenplay writer. I Obviously, it made sense that he was in the arts and entertainment section. So he goes, write about what you know. I said, I don't know nothing but I do like hip hop. So I have a, I have a paltry collection. Like we just have pause tapes that we made, you know what I'm saying? We don't right. really have a lot of albums. Like I think we had maybe like less than 10 albums at the time. You know what I'm saying? Mm. You know, cause we didn't have albums. So we're going backwards and forwards and you know, in the, in the nineties, it's, it, it's a real hard call. There's so many great right. albums last year. There's so many great ones coming out. It's like, right. how do you like, <laughs> you know? And um, so I start to write. And yo, it's 1994, November 1994. So it's literally could be that anniversary, right? Right. It's a little past it. And I write an article, yo, I don't know where this comes out, but I write an article and I call it the three R's that feed and starve hip hop, right? 
record labels, radio, and R&B. And I called it the three R's that feed and starve hip hop. That's my first <laughs> article that I ever wrote. You know? <laughs> so, so right. was, it's like, um, it's like I hit a home run the first time I wrote something. You know what and what, what year was that? This is 1994. And you know those three R's still hold true to today, right? That's what I'm saying. Like, <laughs> crazy, right? right? And I made so. a title for it. I flipped it. I wrote the three R's, like when you're learning in school, reading, mm -hmm. writing, arithmetic, you know? Right. And um, they still hold true because um, the radio could be extended to everywhere where music is pushed. Right. And obviously record labels, it's the desire for other people to allow you to make music, you know? And that's to me right. what a record label really is. And, and give you the funds for that and allow it. And, you know, the, the R and B, you know what I'm saying? The dilution of genres, because it's not about anti R and B. I'm a right. soulmate. You know what I'm saying? I named my daughter Alma, you know what I mean? I named the soul, you know, mm -hmm. and a lot mm -hmm. of that has to do really with music, you know? Right. Right. No doubt. And, and um, but the R and B, you know, became a, like RZA said, rap and bullshit. So, right. Of course, right. I wrote that before RZA said that. So right, <laughs> <laughs> right, definitely noted. But um, the the R and B was how you dilute it, and I was really sparked by uh, Pharaoh um, on organized confusion stress. Oh yeah, yeah. You know why do you yeah. listen to the same song twenty times per day? You know what I'm saying? And that was the quote that sparked the whole piece. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? And, amazing uh, song, amazing song. Yeah, super classic, yeah. and. That also st set off a style of writing that I would do. So that was the only piece I wrote in 1994. But in 1995, I started to write and I figured I could do my own column. And I'm from Sunset, so I wrote it. Mm -hmm. I called it Sunset Style. I had my man Smo, piece of my brother Smo. Yeah. Um, he drew me a logo that had me like in a Kango hat. And then to the side, I had Sunset Style in um, Wild Style Letters. Mm. And I was just writing articles, but something happened in the very beginning i wrote maybe two or three columns and people was cool with them but i was like i want to say what i want to say i want i want to curse i want to flip shit. you want to express and I, yourself right and i realized right. that i saw a uh, i saw um an article in vibe and i looked through the vibe magazine and i bought it because rosie perez was on the cover though Mm -hmm. Ain't no other reason I bought it though. You know what I mean? I think I, I, think I remember that one. It, yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, and I and I and to this day, because I don't salute that article, I thought they talked very condescendingly about Rosie Perez. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But um, you know, but it's a feature. They get her quotes and then they just, they condescend it and pattern it. You know, I right. always did that that way of writing. And um, and, and it's the Gay Talese style of writing. You know, mm -hmm. just you know, mm -hmm. that. There's a science that I studied over these definitely. Years, you know. Gay Talese is like one of the famous uh, journalists that 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 made a style of writing like like a, a fictionalized nonfiction, and so his. But what happened was, if you really read it, a lot of his writing you could hear his own beliefs, his own uh, cliches, his own stereotyping that goes into the way he judges the the the, the subject, because that's what's going to happen when you turn it into a story, a, a nonfiction story. And um, but that's uh, excuse me for a second. But what you what you just said there, right there, that uh, is what has seeped in, and what I saw in the last at least, at least three years into the 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 king moral fabric of America. Mm, what you what you what you just mentioned right there of of, of how he uh, you said. Uh, non-fiction, but it's fiction, right? How right. It, what what it was called was um, literary. What was it? Literary literary journalism. Right, right. Literary journalism. That's what the term became. Right, you know? and and that's like how uh, when they came up with that 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 bullshit or uh, 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 alternative facts, right? You know, when the White House was saying, uh, well, it's alternative facts, they were showing what they were doing, much like what you were talking about. Mm -hmm. They'll, 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 it's reality, right? But they, they put their narrative in a, in, and I guess in a, in an untruthful way or in a condescending way. Yeah. yeah. That, that there, uh, gets mm -hmm. the masses. So the people that would read the article as, you know, the, the, the style that you're saying, when people read that, they become influenced. 
when you do it in a in a big political way, uh, people people become influenced. You know what I mean? And yeah. sway to whatever narrative. So it was just interesting once you said that. I'm like, that's kind of like, where we I, got. I give examples yeah. just because yeah. people, if they 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 think I'm just naming stuff and don't know. Um, I think Gay Talisa is a legendary writer. Right. And Frank Sinatra has a cold is one of his greatest pieces. You know, like these are the days when you'd write like a 40 page piece in a new mm. magazine. You know what I'm mm. saying? Mm. And um, it's a great piece. But Gay Talisa is Italian and so is Frank. So he wasn't going to have like negative shit about Frank like that. Right. You know I mean? Right. Even though I'm, I'm a big fan of Frank Sinatra. So I don't yeah. want to read negative things about him without right. being shown and proven. But um, his articles about like um, female journalists that worked at like, um, I forgot what it was, Cosmopolitan. They were very condescending toward women. Um, he wrote a famous piece about a boxer. I forgot what it was that lost a, a major bout and stuff. And, you know, there was a little bit of a, a you know, ignorance. Right. You know what I'm saying? I'll leave it at that. But the point was is that like that informs most of hip hop journalism. You know what I mean? And most of hip hop journalism tries to take lit, tries to take that style of literary journalism and tell stories. But here's the problem though. A lot of them were black. A lot of them, most of them were black, just, you know, like, like us, but they didn't come from where we came from. Right. They were writing literary journalism that was almost as stereotypical and cliched as any other white first person would have wrote it. Right. And when I opened up the magazine, it was Bones Malone's Sticks and Stones article that I looked at. And I didn't understand most of it, but I understood that he was flipping literary styles and techniques. And unlike the Gaitley school, abuse school of, of literary journalism, right? Bones was writing about his real life artistically. And it was <laughs> his, like, it wasn't fake. It was real. It was grimy. Yeah. And yeah. I was like, all right, right now what I'm doing is I write about I write about albums and I write about people. I write right. I do interviews, but I'm not I'm not an element. I'm not part of hip hop. I'm outside the bubble. Right. You know what I'm saying? So right. for a while, I try everything. I try to do graffiti, um, but I, I'm a I'm a toy. I I, I really suck. <laughs> Nothing comes out dope. You know what I'm saying? Like it just got you. <laughs> you trying though. <laughs> yeah, I try everything. Yeah. You know, so I'm writing on like advertisers. I'm taking everything. I even remember having like. I, where I would go pick up, who, you know, you know, the girlfriend that would become my my first daughter's mother. Mm -hmm. I'd be on the train and I'd look at the the piece I just wrote, and they'd be like, "This sucks." Like I'd see, like it would look like a Benny Hill show. It looks like this sucks, and I was like, "Oh my goodness!" Like <laughs> I was like, "All this kind of stuff sucks too." Why is mine getting right? Why is mine? Why me? You know what I mean? Yeah, <laughs> you know. So I was it like, was "Damn, spit, damn, damn, spit!" You know, mm -hmm. and um, so I was like, "That ain't for me." Right. I tried to be a DJ, but it took so long to sequester like the vinyl and then get the equipment. And then I would right. do things wrong. I would ha have enough money. And I was like, man, this takes a long time, man. Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? And dedication. And then yeah. I realized that if I play records, it doesn't quite express everything I want to say. Hmm. You know, like some DJs are so incredible because it expresses their mentality by just right. being, it, ha it absolutely did nothing for me. Right. You know what I'm saying? So then I do MCing, but I feel like the more I learn about the music that I'm so way behind because I never tried MCing ever. All the years listening, I never tried it because I only really started to really listen well in the in the early 90s. That's right. how late I am. Every Before that as a kid, it went here and left the other ear. Like I right. never listened to lyrics. If it had a nice rhythm, fine. Oh, you people be like, oh, you heard what he said? I was like, not really. I, yeah, I mean, besides like the message or something like that, where yeah. everybody was saying the same. Well, you, like, yeah. like yeah. even even in, as a kid, if you said, "Oh, the message is a deep song," I'm like, "Yeah, that's how I was." With I didn't register yeah. anything. I registered right. nothing. You know what I'm saying? Like, I wasn't listening to anything at all. But um, again, like this is how far beyond went. I didn't write. I didn't read for my own pleasure. So I'm at Baruch, and that happens, and that only happened because. I had gone to the magazine shop and I, I didn't know that they made magazines about hip hop. Oh shit. Okay. So it's only maybe a month or two later that I pick up the Rosie Perez one. Cause now I'm a collector. It's a big deal for me now. I'm like, right. no, I don't have to just read these stupid textbooks they're giving me. You know what I'm saying? Right, right, right. And, um, 
I see Bones article, but I stopped reading Bones. I told Bones himself when I interviewed him that I only read two of his pieces mm. <laughs> because I didn't want to have his style. I wanted to have right. it. Right. And, uh, but I love this fucking style. You know what I'm saying? It was so, right. those two pieces, I kept reading them again and again though. You know what I'm saying? I mean, and, that, was, that was crazy that like Bones Malone had, what was it? Was it the source he had? Uh, it, was vibe. A, it was a vibe. And you know what? Vibe, we, yeah. It was a vibe he had, a, yeah. First question I asked him was, how did you get to write whatever you wanted in vibe? Because I was in vibe too. Right. And everything I wrote got butchered. And I was plagiarized too. You know what I'm saying? Right. And, um, and I was like, I don't even know how he got, because that's why I have such a long resume, because nobody let me do what they let Bones do. You know what I'm saying? And mm -hmm. Bones is well deserved. It's mm -hmm. well deserved. I'm not saying comparing myself that I deserve the same rights as Bones. You know what I'm saying? I'm saying that it didn't, not everybody was allowed to. Right. And, my, my revelation in 1995 was if I'm able to write this piece about other music, about other musicians in a creative fashion, then that means that what I wrote not only is covering hip hop, but it actually is a part of hip hop, its own creative work. Right. And then right. an element of hip hop. And in 1995, I started saying that what I'm doing is a fifth element of hip hop. Mm -hmm. it happened to be around the same time that I start building with brothers that in, in that go to the college and find my works and find me. I never went to a magazine ever to pitch pitch as a writer. Right. They, they always found me, and they said, "Yo, we 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 we're, we're doing shit at Vibe." And I said, "What? I'll do shit." And that's how I got into Vibe, was because of that. Um, people seeing what I wrote, you know what I mean? And now, now, question: like coming into something like like Vibe magazine during that time right there, right? Uh, you being a writer and the kind of writer and and poet uh, that you are, um, did you have like a, a just thought saying they're going to let me do whatever I, whatever I wanted to do and express myself, whatever? Or did you kind of you kind of thought maybe these guys would put a, you know, be nah. watching me a little bit? Nah, you know why? Because... Q-tip gave industry rule number 4,080, right? Yeah, true that's, the only, that's the only one I knew. Yeah, that's I true. I didn't know industry rules 3,000 to 3,500, which are the right. ones that I was in. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. I was really naive, though. You know what I'm saying? Right. So I go in, and I'm thinking, like, first of all, that the guys I'm with, that because they respect my talent, that now we're family. Right. Uh-uh. Right. They're from a different part of Brooklyn. And I'm a spick from a different part. So they got mm -hmm. no allegiance to that. See, I'm thinking like hip hop, that people have allegiance to you because you're dope. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. Because I'm, I'm like that. You know what I'm saying? And not the case, though, because I equated ethos and ethics and principles with the magazine. Right. They just didn't see me that way. So I'm, I'm not going to be here questioning people's morals and ethics. But I just wasn't part of the clique like that. Even though technically, and I, I would tell them to, if they were standing here right now, I'd tell them, I was doper than all of them. You know what I'm saying? I did techniques that they would call me up and say if they could use it in the pieces mm -hmm. that they wrote. And I'd be like, yeah, man, we good. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So like when people quoted, or when people quoted MCs before they wrote a piece, that was shit that I was doing. You know what I'm saying? When people wrote like pieces of poetry before they went into a piece, right. I made that shit up. Nobody did that before. You know what I'm saying? Right. And nobody invent, nobody put prose inside of pieces. I was the one that started that, but my pieces didn't get published. You know what I'm saying? And 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 explain that to to the public when you say prose inside of pieces. What I would do is like when I was taught when I'm talking about like a, a an album per se, right? Right. I would let the lyrics take me to where my creativity would go to. You know what I mean? So if I'm trying to describe the, the the depth of the MC, I might also take that into a creative route of my own. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Whether it be silly, whether it be through metaphor, you know what I'm saying? And I might extend on it, you know what I mean? To, to make the emphasis of how dope this guy was doing it, as opposed to just stating it. You know what I mean? Right. right. So it would be stuff that normally would get clipped out in editing. You know what I'm saying? Or you need to rewrite this because it's a little bit too, I, I've gotten every word, uh, ethereal, um, it, it's too mystical, it's too this, it, it's too no, abstract, 
You know what I mean? Um, and I thought like, yo, this is hip hop. Why is this magazine have to be so boring? You know what I mean? Right. I, I thought like hip hop is about expressing yourself to the fullest. Right, right. Right. So I'm in, I'm in the hip hop magazine doing hip hop, whereas they're just covering hip hop. And that's why I get terms that I have when I call things leech leeches. The the, the typical journalist is a leech leech, a leech, right. the leeching artist. You know what I mean? Because right. the, the leeching artist, the blood sucking artist, is the best is the best type of artist for the leech writer to leech onto. You know what I'm saying? It's mm. a faster it's a faster ride. You know what I mean? And you can hop off quicker. You know what I'm saying? Do, but, do, um, do you believe? Um, not not going too far off subject, but with that with that leech writer thing. Do you believe some uh, of the hip hop journalists that's out there today are like almost on some payola shit where it's like, okay, if they they get picked to uh, personally uh, uh, pump, they almost like a publicist, they become like, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. And, instead of a hip hop journalist, because I've seen like guys, you know, they they just fall into the corporate web and and they just start pushing whatever machine is out there. Yeah. If they tell if they tell them to push Lil Nas X, they'll push Lil Nas X. Yeah. If they, you know, if they it's it's yeah. no freedom. I have seen less freedom in hip hop journalism besides yourself, right? Who 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 still is keeping it in the purest form. But a lot of other journalists that's out there are really, really are just following the corporate mm -hmm. way. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's bred that way. You know, like when you get a piece, they give you a bio, you know, you know all about this, mm -hmm. but a lot of people don't know how much editors keep the writers to that bio. You know what I'm saying? Stick to the bio, you know, f just add some information in there. You know what I'm saying? And I would literally read the information I didn't know. So I, I look respectable in an interview. Mm -hmm. Okay, I should know he's from Brooklyn. I should know the basics info, the bio. And then after that, though, the bio was a Kobe right in the basket. You know what I'm saying? I'm not using none of that shit. That's right. You know what I'm saying? I'm not using none. Of, you know what I right. mean? Yeah. I'm not right. using none of that shit because I don't want to sound like that bio. Uh, it was like blasphemy. Mm -hmm. I don't care who wrote it. Right. That was for us to extract information, not to be the article. You know what I'm saying? Right. right. But that's not really how it goes. And it goes through a conveyor belt, too. So everybody's style of writing, though, is 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 modified cornstarch through the conveyor belt. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And I, I remember, like, when I worked at a particular magazine, I would try to chase the conveyor belt <laughs> and get it after it finishes the last guy and take it right. back and scribble it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And try to get right. it back. You know right. what I mean? Right. And sometimes that would fail even, even still. You know what I'm saying? Because, like, people would catch me on the end of that conveyor belt. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, Yo, this shit sounds whack though. You know? And sometimes magazines came out though and I wouldn't be thrilled like I should be because I was right. like, oh man, like. Well, there was a, I mean, in the 90s, there was a slew of, of hip hop magazines, right? So right. you had Vibe, you had The Source, you had Rap Pages, you had yeah. uh, all all types and it was different. I would, say, I would say this, right? All the magazines that I got to, right? I'm gonna say this and I'll keep it as real as possible. Mm -hmm. The magazines, most magazines major didn't let you write that way. The other magazines that were magazines that were almost major, like stress and others. Right. Stress. I wasn't down with them personally like that. Mm -hmm. So they didn't want to fuck with somebody like me writing shit for them too much. Right. Mm -hmm. So you get like two styles of hiring. You get people that hire just so they could hire because they'll put them through the conveyor belt. Right. And then you get people that just hire people that they know. You know what I'm saying? And I'm coming into this where, like, for example, some magazines are based off, like, people that did hip-hop, and then they extend to other things. Right. right. I come into the fold and saying, like, listen, this is what I do. You know what I'm saying? And you're never going to read it like this anywhere you go. Fuck with me. I said, we don't know you, man. You didn't try this you didn't try we didn't see you rapping here we didn't see you b-boying there so, nah, nah. right 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 that's not what i do i do this shit you know mm -hmm. what i'm saying and so in the 90s from that year nine really 96 to 2000 2000 that's pretty much the difficulties of being a, a hip-hop journalist for me you know what i'm saying by the time 2000 hits my life takes a total different turn because i get the knowledge of myself you know what i mean so it alters the way I look at things. I start to see that 
um, that you can't change things that, that are meant to be that way. You know what I'm saying? That's what they want to do. You know what I'm saying? At the same time, I also realize that they want to write it that way. So what I mean by that though, is like when old dirty returns to the essence, even though me and the God day son are at the source, they don't want us to write that piece. Even though we know, we know freedom personally, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. We know Papa Wu personally. We're going to get a story about uh, a son unique remembered in perfection in a way that nobody else is going to get it. But yet they use this to try to explain lyrics to them. You know what I mean? And when we yeah. explain it to them though, it's still, they still fuck it up. So the magazines get it already late by 2000. The magazine is as thick as cosmopolitan and they don't care about who gets it right or not. So we're too late in there already. That's how cool. I felt. Like we're too late because they're going to abuse it anyway. But why is that? Why, why do you think they, uh, I'm going to tell didn't... you why it goes back yeah. to the gay to style of writing. Right. You know what I'm saying the gay to style of writing though, doesn't mean that means that you're not embedded in there. It means that you are a narrative. You were writing a literary narrative from outside. See, I didn't, I didn't write like that. Right. I wrote as if I was right there with them. You know right. what I'm saying? In the trenches. So, right. And right. it helps that gay to Lee style because the black people, and I can't even say brown because they're not letting me write. And a lot of it has to do because I'm Puerto Rican. They're giving me, yo, it's corny. I go in there, they give me Latino guy, Latino guy, Latino guy. After... After I'm done with B Nuts and Fat Joe, there's almost no money I could really make. Right. Because the level of A list or high quality artist is kind of like just like the industry. Right. Because I'm going around the industry hearing stories and I'm like, yeah, you know, if you're Puerto Rican, if you look blatantly Puerto Rican, the cliche Puerto Rican, right. Then you're not going to get a deal. You know what I'm saying? If you look darker, like let's say we got my Boricua brother and he looked like toast. Mm -hmm. Just don't be mentioning that shit. Don't be talking no Spanish and you in the game, you know, and this is not my words. These are words from, uh, um, Q unique from the arsonist. And I named mm -hmm. him first because we had differences of opinion in how we thought about hip hop. You right. could read that in new Eurekans from the hip hop zone by Raquel Rivera. We have totally different views of hip hop. Mm. Fat Joe told me this, you know what I'm saying? Fat Joe told me that they wanted him to do a uh, uh, freestyle like TK. Can you imagine that? Wow. I, I wow. doubt he could even harmonize, let alone, you know, dance that way. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. So it's like the cliches were mounting. So the the music was be the music and culture was being sold as an African American art form. You know, so much so that by the end of the by the end of the 2000s, you see uh, scholars like Imani Perry. I name them all out, God. That way, people don't think like, oh, she's just saying shit. Well, she wrote in her book that Jamaicans, just because Jamaicans were there in the beginning doesn't mean that it is a Jamaican art form, uh, hip hop. And she disqualifies the depth of, of importance of Cool Herc. And I'm like, yo, just because of what Cool Herc did, hip hop is also Jamaican. That's a fact. Right. No right. way. It, it, and, it's and all of that. The way, I'm the way I'm defining it as a, a genre and culture of the black and brown diaspora. And as an original man, 5% I see the black diaspora is all the black, brown, yellow. Right. Then that's the way I'm defining it in the way that I write. Even in 2005, I had to go back to that conveyor belt and I right. had to slam the conveyor belt with a monkey wrench because it was being taken out in, in, in the piece about pun. When I started the piece off and I had written coming from a place where Puerto Ricans co-created hip hop culture. Right. That shit was being erased now. And how, how is that? When that is a I, it's a fact. It's a again, it's a the editor I'm talking to is your shade. You know what I'm saying, Toast? And she's telling me, you know, from what I know, you know, Puerto Ricans didn't didn't start hip hop. From what she knows. And I'm saying, but like, like, but what do you know? You're telling me about what you was told. I could show you old source articles that go against what you just did here. You know what I'm but saying? That's, but that's an atrocity because it's easily, that's one, I mean, if that's not the hardest thing in hip hop that you can research and look on, the, 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 the hmm. partnership of, of, this is of funny, culture between right? Latinos and, funny and, and blacks. Yeah. yeah. 
I'm coming off in the night. My one of my first things I did in 1995 when I started to do this was Raquel Rivera, right, was doing her PhD thesis on hip hop, right. and she needed the American equivalent to what Puerto Ricans were doing in Puerto Rico, and that's where I came in, and that's why I met the great professor Juan, professor and writer Juan Flores, who wrote many books about music, mm -hmm. salsa rising. He wrote from Bomba to hip hop, among many other books about other subjects, and. Working with him and working with Raquel Rivera. And she wrote that book, New Ricans from the Hip Hop Zone. And many of my quotes lead the book, showing that we're a diaspora. And I was saying that before I got the knowledge of self from the gods. Right. You know right. what I'm saying? And that shit never took place because that's not how you sold rap. You know what I'm saying? You didn't sell it like that, you know? So everybody that was Jamaican, everybody that was Caribbean, you just assume that they was African American, and it's a simple, simple, mm -hmm. simple black and white, no grays in between. Right. That there's no culture clashes between our people, none right. of that kind of stuff. You know what I'm saying? Right. And right. that there doesn't exist the possibility that we actually could merge our cultures because they are so similar. Right. You know, like for example, like when people talk about MC comes from the Grio, and then they skip all the way to James Brown. Right, right, right. And they, right. they they throw in jazz in the middle and scatting. Right. Like all the genres were infused with that. Reggae was toasting. Salsa was doing soneos. Those are mm -hmm. all rhymes. Everything rhymes. All mm -hmm. our music is filled with rhymes as an art form and mm -hmm. as a way of dissing. Right. So it's most, it, a lot of our hip hop guy, it's like a collision. And all these things that I'm writing now, um, I still was being blocked because I was writing things as a, as a firsthand embedded person, as opposed to this distant gate to lease visualization. Right, right. And, and that visualization yeah. helps a lot of these writers because a lot of the writers in hip hop were not like Bones. They right. Were, they were, were very intelligent, very smart, and absolutely zero, near zero street smart and very low level hip hop culture lifestyle embedded. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They wasn't embedded in that shit. They got into that shit and they experienced hip hop as a cyphers in college. Right. That's not that's not where I got hip hop. Right. I didn't go to Baruch College though and all of a sudden was like, wow, hip hop, you know what I mean? Oh, this shit is great. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So that's what informed a lot of the black folk that were writing and, and when I went to Vibe, it was a total culture shock. I used to look around when I had the few moments in the office to look around for bones and I never found them. <laughs> I never found them. And I never, yo, real talk, I never saw bougie blacks before. I never saw, um, I never saw white people telling black folk what their culture was. Like, wow. Wow. I never saw that before. Right. You know, and as a young, as a young man, it made me more militant and so I became an ultimate bridge burner. You know what I'm saying? You know, I became an ultimate bridge burner. If it wasn't right and exact to me, I was burning bridges. I was saying that's some right. shit. That's this. You know what I mean? Like all of that. And yeah, you was you was correct in order as you saw it right. right there. So because I didn't get embedded in the click like that, right? Editorship was a long way. It was out the door. You know what I'm saying? Where I would. I would call up and one guy would tell me, yo, ask for a job, man. Ask my man. And I would go ask my, like, I'm thinking I'm just being referred to. Right. You're my man. I'm being referred to your man. Then I call him and he says, we ain't got no job here. I'm like, all right. You know what I'm saying? So uh, this oddities of the industry. Right. And as a, so I'm stuck as a freelance writer. You know what I'm saying? Right. And I just bounce and bounce around to wherever. And I never get to, really show people what it is until I start doing my own thing in the 2000s, start putting my own magazines together. You know, I, I did my own magazines, Our Swords. It was like Our Sacred Words, sword, Our Swords. Mm -hmm. And I put a couple of issues, but it was so costly. I couldn't continue. See, that's it, the thing, right. It yeah. was, this is before the internet. And then I did another one. I did Lavo Revolt, because Hector Lavo is my favorite. I consider him, he's my goat. And Lavo means the voice. They just called him the voice because his name right. is Hector Perez. So it's a Hector right. Lavo, the voice. So I said, and my favorite, one of my favorite Eddie Pamiri songs is Revolt, La Libertad Logico, the logical liberation, like the inev inevitable. Right. You know? And I said, let me call it Lavo Revolt. And I did that magazine. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And again, 
the cost it was cost i couldn't get the the advertising and shit like that you know what i mean so it wasn't really so then i i still do some things for magazines but it, it, i never get to throw i never get to throw that shit out though it's like if i'm doing martial arts though but like son you can't even kick this hot you know what i'm saying like right, right. My, leg is, my leg is itching you know what i'm saying like right right <laughs> you know what i mean and um by the 2010s i'm like you know what i have to write that's all i know how to do so i start writing a blog you know and i take my lava revolt as a blog but i meet up with two people and one of them is paragon who designs all my covers mm -hmm. most of them you know what i'm saying because he's my man you know what i mean mm -hmm. doesn't ask for a penny when I, I try to give him some he won't take it and he's doing premierhiphop.com and he's doing it with kevlar seven now that connects because Kevlar Seven remembered in perfection. That's my brother right there. Kevlar Seven, the brother of Bronze Nazareth, right? right. Who just became uh, uh, a fourth, uh, you know, part of uh, the Wu Disciples of producers. Right. And Bronze, we're connected because Bronze, when I, in my last days at the Source, I get Bronze's early work. Think the Wu, the Wu, Wu Indie project that they did. Think differently. Oh yeah, uh, right. He's all over that project. And I was like, I know this kid is dope because I heard his beats before. I heard all the beats he had. And I was like, yo, he could right. rhyme. Ooh, he's going to be the next shit. Right. And I, and I and I get command of the indie top five. And I put that album in there. You know, so it's the first time Bronze is in print in a major mag. Dope. And, and so I'm like, yo, I love what Bronze does, you know. And I didn't even know Kevlar did shit. So I'm writing about Kevlar. I already know who Kevlar is because I wrote about his shit already by then. Right. And so they're doing the mag they're doing a magazine, but they need somebody to write and really give it that shit. And I said, listen, y'all, y'all give me endless space. Then the shit that I made up, I could show what it looks like. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so on Premier Hip Hop, I start writing pieces where I start writing reviews and I write not your typical album reviews, but it starts to develop where they go from prose, but they go from like, I'm writing poems. And they'll either be broken up throughout the piece or at the top of the piece. And the poem will be inspired by the entire album I heard. Right. So it right. could relate directly to the artist or it could just be something that was inspired by it. You know what I mean? And then it lead into prose throughout that I'm just flipping about that artist. And then I take it to another level where like, I always felt the detail of the way the music was written. And now I could expose the other influence I have because as far as a writer, People like Bones, but also Amiri Baraka, they, Amiri Baraka did what, what I would love to do in hip hop. And so that's what I said, had set out to do. Write technically about the music, but also be a creative force in, in the art. Right. You know? And that's what he did with jazz. And so that's what I sought out to do. But I always felt that the detail of hip hop writing and about music was very shallow. It was always about like and dislike. So people describe music too much like flavors. You know what I'm saying? Right. So when you read rap reviews, you read about this is hot, this is not, this is dope, this is cool. That's what I call like a babyish flavoring. It's flavors. That's not music writing. You didn't write about the music. Right. Because my perception of dope is not a barometer that anyone can apply. Like nobody listens to music and goes, ooh, this is high. I understand the Sunya's dope meter. Unless you read tons of things I wrote, you would never understand. Right. So I thought that was insufficient. So I started to say, we got to put some science on the music. And I really got that from a, a, a journalist that returned recently. He did a lot of radio broadcasts, was Phil Schapp, you know? And Phil Schapp used to do his jazz broadcast. And it's funny because his eulogy in the New York Times was exactly, they wrote it condescendingly, but it was something that I would love to be written when I return. Hmm. They wrote that sometimes he got so technical that he went off the mark. Like, like he went too far in the technicality. And I'm like, yo, that's exactly where we need to be because I'd be listening. I didn't know much about jazz and I wanted to collect, right? Mm -hmm. So I became obsessed that, you know, you collect everything that's in the notes. But then, you know, because you're, you're a great producer, you know that hip-hop samples jazz, but not really jazz jazz. They sample a lot of jazz funk. Right, right. They're sampling a lot of, because it's easier. But right, the you, pure jazz. Jazz, you don't have overt breaks like that. 
So right. that's not an example. So I was like, that's the music I was falling in love with because I love everything Miles Davis. Right. Everything Miles Davis. But I was like, how do I expand? I start listening to Phil Schaap and he's giving such details about everything. And I said, yo, what would it be like to have a radio show where I just talk about the details of a damn record? You know what I'm saying? The right, show, right. You know, I got to write shit like that. So that's what I start to embed in these pieces. I'm like, every detail that, like, if I describe a beat and you read about it, you know, that's the kind of shit I like. Mm -hmm. I like to do that shit. I said, when it's thick enough to fill the room because the baseline has a certain way of ex uh, of surrounding and then going in where you have the drums doubling up. Now I'm describing a Pete Rock track. You know what I'm saying? Right, right, you know what I'm saying? right. Or the, the way that there's dissonance on certain RZA tracks. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm trying to describe the detail that's in the track because there's so much music that's new. People are only describing it, comparing it to golden era. Right. Like things like, oh, it's like old school boom bap. Because they don't know how to describe a record. You just say it sounds like that shit I heard before. Right, right, right. The new movement today. You know what I'm saying? Right. Fucks up mm -hmm. whatever you would produce or whatever you think. Right. Those two things led to me saying, listen, I'm doing art on art. This is an art piece that can stand alone, but it is about that art. Art on art. And it's filled with science on music. Something deeper. I'm not just saying... Oh, he got bars. I quote you the bar, and then I'm, I'm going to tell you why that bar is dope. So much so that, like, I'll write about bars, and I'll quote them that a lot of other people get wrong. Right. And then, like, like this happened. Uh, this happens a couple of times with who I think is one of the best I've ever heard. Napoleon, like, I'll talk, I, I build with Napoleon. Like, he's a friend, you know what I mean? Like, he's a really mm -hmm. great friend. And I build with him. He's like, yo, you know, when you wrote that, I didn't even know I was doing that technique when you wrote that. And I said, yo, that's crazy. Cause you know a lot of you know a lot of MCs just go with the flow, right, they, right, right. Bed themselves in the vibe of the of the beat, and I feel like that's that's my work to say like look look at the depth of his technique here, and to do it where it's not so robotically where you don't enjoy it. Like I don't I don't really care for like um like the how to rap books like bar here and cut bar here. Oh and, yeah yeah yeah. To put it in that, yeah. That kind of technicality to me is not what shows you the joy of what the MC did. It takes away yeah, freedom. the soul aspect of what that man did or right. what that female did with that rhyme. You know what I'm saying? And a lot right. of times they'll miss out on what was the soul element. Because you know, a lot of rhymes could be very basic, but they can mm -hmm. be embedded with so much soul. How do you write about that? And that's what right. I try to get to. You know what right. I'm saying? Look at, our, our brother, like, look at look at Marcano. There's right. a lot of bars if you Salute. go down though, they are not very intricate. Right. But when you go back into the song, that's the part of the song that makes it incredible. It and hits it you. Like, oh, that's what you focus. That's what you focus in on. Right. That there, that it there is a is a ill art form because you can't yeah. it you can't just right. you can't just like you know people may think it may come off as uh, you know simple or this 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 and that but. No, you have to know what to right. say. Right, right. What words right. to say so to, 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 I'm to really... Trying to, I'm trying to write it like a science, right, Toast? Right. And so then I'm trying to quantify and understand. So it's why in all those years writing, I start from 10,000 and going so deeply into it that at 2012, that's why my daughter, my second daughter was born in 2013. Bless and that's you. why her name ends up being Soul because I'm so embedded in studying the soul of this stuff and 2012 was such an important year because I, I was at a show and I'm with Napoleon again. And he's out like, yo, so what do you want to do with this? Because Napoleon is, yo, he's not a five percenter. But to me, he's the God because when we say write your history in advance, mm -hmm. he said, yo, I'm going to do this. And then you look and say, yo, he really did that. Right. It's right. the most inspirational shit ever. You know what I'm saying? And he's telling me like, yo, what do you want to be? And I'm, I'm much more simple. I'm working at 95. At this time, I, I have like a family, so I'm like I'm like a happy square. I'm a happy square, you know what I'm wow. saying? I said, like, you know what? At the end of this decade, because now I get to do what I do in hip hop, like I finally get to show what that writing is. By the end of the decade, I'm saying this in 2012 to him. I'm a, I'll have definitive proof that I'm the best writer. Nobody's fucking with me. Right now, I'm I'm hip hop toast, so you know I feel yeah, like all the way. I feel like I achieved that 1,000. You know what I'm saying? No question. Without question, I will, I will go and give you two sheets of paper and a pen, pen, 
with any nigga and let us write raw right there. I will, mm -hmm. I, I will kill him right there. Whatever the fuck we write about, you know what I'm saying? Definitely, that's a hundred percent. And I said that in 2012, but what happened was, I also go home and I'm starting to looking around and it was Spit Jam's Fuck the Radio release party. We was having this conversation and I'm seeing Napoleon. He didn't even perform. I'm like, yo, he didn't even perform. Spit Jam's, uh, F you, all these guys. Um, the whole broken home. Constant Flow was literally next to me. And he climbs up on stage to freestyle. Nems, you know, fuck out of here. You know, the fuck your life. He's over here. You know what I'm saying? He's doing all types of shit. Mm -hmm. and, and then I just had the, I just wrote about Kaz's grief pedigree. Right. And Rock Marciano's Reloaded is out. And I'm like, yo, this is like, it's like a renaissance, you know? Right, 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 right. You know what I'm saying? You feeling and, that energy, yep. And I felt like I'm the only one that's seeing the most important parts of it and probably be the only one to write about it. And so mm -hmm. I call it the invisible renaissance. I say, this is the invisible renaissance because it's so much incredible shit. And I had called the 2000s the dark ages because <clears throat> so much of my shit got killed. <clears throat> Magazines got thicker and right. I wrote books. You know what I'm saying? Right. And articles got weak. People justified people that don't have no deserving right to be called the goat. You know what I'm saying? And we hear arguments like that. And it's no, it's no knock to anybody. You know what I'm saying? It's no knock to me. Like people go, oh, you see, because you don't like Eminem. That's what he's saying. Eminem deserves his record deal. Right. But in 1999, when write editors and writers from magazines call me up and say, yo, you got to hear this album, the debut. Slim Shady, because I think that he's going to be the GOAT. And I said, nigga, you wrong. Pop. Mm -hmm. Wrong. You wrong. Because there's n there's nothing in there that you could listen to right. that you could tell me is GOAT level. Nothing. Right. right. Nothing. Because albums right after that, like people talk, oh, then he did Marshall Mathers. So. And Dead Press just came out with Let's Get Free. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> It's a lot of crazy shit out during those years. And I'm right telling there. you, like, yo, to put it in context, right? Yeah. The writers and editors that came, that gave me Let's Get Free, that showed me, they invited me because they knew I would love that record. Right. They were on point. They had, the only copy they had, they gave it to me and said it's okay, which meant that they probably weren't going to write about it and that they didn't care about it like that because there's no way I give away my only copy of Let's Get Free. Yeah, that's crazy. That record? It's crazy. Now, I give it to you if mine's is so scratched up that I got to buy another I got to buy another one tomorrow. Yeah, you got to take it. Yeah, you can you take that me, one. You can, have, you can have this joint because I, I got to get right. a new one. You know what I'm saying? Right. I give away my daily operation when the EMI cassettes start getting stripped. Right. You keep right. that. <laughs> you, keep right. that. Right. you can take there's that no one. Right. This got right. beat up. But mm -hmm. not, not before. And that was really like the trend, like the shit that Ghostface did on Supreme Clientele. You know what I'm saying? Mm. You, you can't tell me mm -hmm. that now I have to go into a magazine though and kind of bear witness that Eminem is on the path to be the GOAT. Uh, did you listen to what he Ghost just did? Yeah. You know what I'm right. right. And I'm like, and I'm like, pardon my Boricuanes, but did you hear what Pun is doing? Right. Because you, you and I both know, from 2000, I'm going to give you smaller, 2000 to 2007, right. every underground rapper was imitating pun. Oh, yeah, without question. They were rhyming as fast as they could. <laughs> that was the thing. And, and yeah. let's keep it real, though. Look, I, I, I'll be honest, because I give it to him. Rather Rugged Man is a great MC. Yep. yep. But most of his 2000 records sound exactly like the way pun rhymes. Yeah. That's I mean, you, you you went through that. He, he influenced uh, Vinny the, Paz and the great the whole ones. Group. Yeah, yeah, Vinny Paz is another. One. The great ones influence other gr great and good MCs. You know what I'm saying? Right. Mm -hmm. You know, just like Tupac. People talk shit about Tupac, but everybody was doing the high inflections. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He and, gave he and gave learning, over. and learning how to say less and right. make it mean more because a lot of records started to become very unsoulful. Right, right. Right. That, that's why, you know, as a side note, that's why Eminem took root because his own soul, the way Eminem projected it, right, coming out unbridled. Mm -hmm. Whereas everybody's trying to be the rap, 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 rapity rap, you know, and it was boring as hell, boring right. as hell, you know. 
Right, so right those, timing for him. Those 2000s were the dark ages because so many artists I would pitch to, to magazines and be like, who's that? You know what I'm saying? Yo, I was at a magazine and I pitched Mr. Liff. I love Mr. Liff. Right. This is his height. Like he did, you know? And and because I'm I'm Puerto Rican, so of course Toast, they don't know who he is. So he goes, is that a reggaeton singer? And I was like, wow, okay. The blasphemy, the blasphemy. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. Just how people think. That and you would they... think that I even like that shit, but right. like that, that's what I would be pitching to you. Because if you didn't know it, it must be a reggaeton guy. Right. But this is the kind of years of 2000s where so like, yo, once I got with Premier Hip Hop and those two brothers, I, I just launched off. And in two, this leads to my, my books. In 2013, that was the the the, the year my, my daughter, my second daughter was in the womb. I wrote, I wrote over 80 articles and I said, you know what? I'm putting this into a PDF. And I made that my first PDF book, the Sunyas crates. And that was over 300 pages. That's how long these pieces were. You know what I'm saying? Because then I still didn't understand how to publish. I had done other work though, but I keep it real. The people I work with, they didn't give me the secrets. Right. I didn't know how to get that affordable publishing and really launch it off. Cause I'm doing right. all about enough startup capital. You know what I'm saying? Even by the 2010s, early 2010s, the journalist writer is an enemy. You know what I'm saying? I remember when I used to have, yo, remember the perfection, Sean Price, man. I used to have conversations with him and tell him, like, what I do as a writer. Like, the whole thing I told you about my element. Mm -hmm. And he'd be like, <laughs> it didn't register. You know, it didn't register. You know what right. I'm saying? Right. It was, and that made me laugh even more because I knew that, like, yo, for him, the, the writers and magazine stuff, those niggas are the enemy. They don't write nothing. Of, they don't understand this shit. Yeah, they don't understand what what what, what he you know what he's I doing mean, and how he's doing it. I finally got him to read one thing I wrote about him. He's like, he's like, all right, I get it, I get it. Right. We never right. built about that about hip hop ever again. After that, he said, I get it, and he, all he did was try to throw me other rappers. That's how I met Napoleon the Legend. Right. You know right. what I'm saying? He was right. like, Go write about me, write about him. And I'm thinking like, damn, we gotta write about somebody else when Napoleon was incredible. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. And sure. yo, always yo, great man. And, and and so so the thing was is like, once I launch off, I, I'm writing all these things. I'm like, um, changing the way you do stuff. You know what I'm saying? So by by 2016, against Par Paragon. He meets DJ Toshi and he's around for one of Toshi's classic stone radio shows. Right. right? Okay. And, and Toshi, you know, he says, Toshi doesn't have a good uh, host to do proper interviews. You know what I'm saying? And um, I, I told him you would do it way better. You know what I'm saying? And I was like, yo, if he doesn't, if he needs a host, I would love to do it. I'd love to get back into radio. Cause I did it briefly in college. You know what I'm saying? We did the right. Bobito. We do everything Bobito does. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. Gotcha. And, um, so I was like, yo, I could do that. You know what I'm saying? I'd love to do it. Cause I do interviews well and I'll do that. And, um, so I started doing Tochi show in 2016, you know what I'm saying? And, um, obviously, you know, keep me real, it, just as good as my off air interviews are for columns. These become right. great, you know what I'm saying? These become great. And eventually, it's funny, I tap in, and I'm just showing you how it all coincides. I right. tap in with this brother named G Math, mathematics, right? And what's so crazy is that he wants to um, you know, he actually knows me, right? And wants to interview me about the nation for the Vandal Hour, which is a, a sh radio show he made about um it's one of the greatest radio shows about graffiti. Right. right. And he just wants me on it to build about the gods and stuff because I'm a five percenter and he knows me because I wrote to him. He came to some of my classes. I don't remember because in my class, I, I teach a class at a law school in Mecca called the Peace right. Political right. Education and Civilization Enrichment. A civilization class teaching the students knowledge of, but whoever comes, whatever that they want to know. A lifestyle mm -hmm. course, a self-help course, right? And I've been teaching that since 2000. So this is over 20 years I've been teaching this. And so if somebody says they came to my class, that doesn't mean I remember them, you know, right. like a lot of people. And he goes, you also wrote to me when I was in prison and it meant a lot to me. That also I didn't remember. I wrote to lots of people in prison, you know what I'm right. saying? Right. And um, 
he had no idea what I'd done in hip hop. So when we start kicking it, he's like, yo, you do a lot of shit in hip hop. And then we do the interview and my interview is about hip hop and the nation. Cause I put it all together. That's my life. Right. He goes, yo, I didn't know you were this like this. You got to get your own show. So I start doing my own show and I call it the power right show. You know what I'm saying? Because I, right. had, just, I had just interviewed, uh, our, our brother, Prince Paolo, Marcano. Right. Salute. Salute. And, and Bones Malone saw the picture with us together and wrote Power Rule and Power Right. Now that's Bones Malone. So I was wow. like, that, man, that, yeah, that's bro, crazy. Bro. This yeah. is like, this is like fucking Jordan telling Kobe, like, yo, you, you all right. Right. Go with it though. You know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. Like, bro, right. you, no. I see you, Mamba. That's like, I see you, Mamba. I was like, what? Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. so I was like, that was oh, dope. Right. So I call the show the Power Right Show, and I say the Power Right Show is about my element of hip hop, the mm -hmm. things that I do great in hip hop. This is where you see them, and, and my ideas. And so that ends up becoming its own separate show when he, when Math gets his own studio, the S Street Media Studios. So that's how I get that, and I start mm -hmm. doing that in like 2018. You know what I'm saying? And I just passed my hundredth show because my hundredth show was Bones Malone. And my brother, um, my brother um Rock Him Supreme Shabazz, aka Rudy Lowe, right? And um those two that that all coincides because like if I give my history, like how it all this writing propelled me, because at Sean again, it's Sean Price again mm -hmm. at his wake, right? Some but Spit Gems and some other brothers are introducing me as a writer, but they're trying to tell them that I'm not a regular writer. I'm not one right. of those writers. Right. I don't know where Thurston Howe splits the crowd. This is the way I'm seeing it, though, because I'm not the tallest guy. You know what I'm saying? Right. Gotcha. <laughs> and he goes, that ain't no writer. And people don't know how much he knows me. Right. Not everybody knows. So they're like, oh, shit, he's about to bomb some. That ain't no writer. That's the skill illustrator. Mm. So I was like, mm. again, mm. my mind is blown. I'm like, yo. Mm. You know what I'm mean? saying? Mm. And he calls me the skill illustrator. If Thurston Howe calls you the skill, if he uses the word skill with you, you keep yeah. that name. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. And that name when I salute to Thurston Howe. Salute. Big, big bro, man. Big right. bro, two L's up. You know what I'm saying? Definitely. Definitely. But, um, Low life nation. What happens is, is that Rock Kim Rudy Low, who who always was with him, he finds out about me too and says, with the things I do with the school and the things I do, you know, for the community, mm -hmm. and all the things I do in hip hop, it would be great if I was part of the Low Lives. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And show that this is a a community based organization, but also a hip hop based organization. I fit all the boxes, right? Except that I never took one of these joints. Like the most, I, I'm a professional. At stealing CDs and tapes, you know what I'm saying? Right. <laughs> real joke with people, not even vinyl, because that shit is too big. You know? What yeah, I'm saying? that shit is too big. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah. You know what I mean, because mm -hmm. I would have loved to be able to take some vinyl, bro. But tote, that shit is too big. I'm, I'm little. Trying to snuff my man, this in the My man used to take the vinyl, but he was like six four. He was like boom, boom, and I'm uh, like, oh, you yeah, with the big hoodie? I, yeah, I'm like. Yeah. I got a little cassette because you know what I mean, <laughs> and the pockets sure. are big, so you can fit the CD in there. You know, See, that I was had, a that yo, was the advantages of having baggy jeans. Yo, in the 90s, I had you know all of these. I used to yeah. I, I either take them or I had like little stickers, and I would have like little ninety nine cent stickers. I would put on shit like oh, yo, yeah, I was yeah, OD, yeah. you know, like yeah. strategies. Yo, I knew that Sam but Goody. You, and the Wiz would sell the, the cut tapes, the one, the promotional cut tapes. Right, right. They would sell them for cheap in the front, and they would have no they would have no bar on them. Oh. See, they would have no code on them. Right, I remember those. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'd be like, yo, let's, I always used to go to that bin to see what they had, though. I got yeah. the, and the Soul Brother cassette from that Ooh. bin because it was cut. And I was like, yeah. You know what Ooh, I mean? See, that's Not that. That now. was the beauty. That was the beauty back in the day of, of finding music but again, and yo, doing you things. Know, yeah. You know our history. That album I probably bought like five times, man. Yeah, yeah, five yeah times. for sure. We would break the cassette. The cassette would break. Yeah, you know? it was in incredible. We was playing that like back to back oh, to back to back. Incredible. Yo, it was it was treasure. I always mention that album because it's like the dopest shit I ever took. Oh yeah. <laughs> no, no, I, I, I had of I did, all the uh, records I stole. 
Mecca yeah. and Soul Brother is the dopest shit I ever, I ever stole. I got a, a, a similar story to that. Um, me and my boy, uh, I guess he somehow <laughs> obtained a credit card that wasn't his right oh, oh, and, he, and, he, and he did that shit when we was downtown and we went uh i forgot what record store downtown but um we went and we got uh the single deep cover from dre it just came out and we was like yo this shit is from the movie yo nah fuck it get it right oh, and man. and we wanted to see if that shit went through we just wanted to make a purchase to see if that shit went through that shit went through man we went back uptown and we put that shit on we was like <laughs> the fuck <laughs> like, yo, oh, man, that's crazy Yo, Crazy, let me tell you though, because for the listeners and shit, the story that took away even those minor crimes out of my life, right? Right. H&M, I realized I never had X-Clan's first album. And I'm like, yo, I should have that. And right. I was mad about something. I was mad the way an article was published. So I was very angry about hip hop. I was like, yo, how much do I got to do before they write just something that I actually said? Right. So I was taking out my anger by stealing. So I'm at HM, HM, HMV, you know, the record store HMV mm -hmm. on 34th Street. They got a lot of cameras, though, but I'm not giving a fuck. You know what I mean? Because I've done it before. Right. I slice open the cassette. I said, it's a little hard, though. So I just, I said, you know what? I'm just going to travel with the cassette. Fuck the insert. You know what I'm saying? But then I go, damn, I need the insert. Because, you know, we obsessive. We need the insert. Oh, yeah, yeah. You got to see you know, shout outs. That's what gets me caught, though. Yeah. I go back for the insert. When I go out. I get caught though. And I, I'm not a fast runner. So I'm like, oh, I got to take this L here. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Right. And the guy, it, the guy looks, it's 1999. The guy looks, through, and I'm already, you know, I'm past 20. I shouldn't be doing this shit. You know what I mean? But right. I'm doing a lot of anger. Right. And guy looks into my bag and he sees, it's 1998, 1998, not 99. He sees Supreme Alphabet Mathematics and 1 of 10. I hadn't gone to a law school mecca yet. Because the God Day son gave it to me and was like, yo, you gotta be sharp before you go. So I'm thinking I have to really, really be on it before I even step into the school. And he goes, oh, so you're one of these guys, these gods that like to do crimes and stuff, huh? And I'm like, no, no, that has nothing to do with that. I didn't, I'm trying to explain to him that that has nothing to do with my choices because I'm not even like there. Right. I, I'm not technically a 5%. I, I just have those things there. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Not only did I feel embarrassed for who I felt I really was, the God and representing the nation, I was embarrassed because then I got a letter that went to my old earth. You know what I'm saying? And exactly. she was not surprised that I would get into that type of trouble. You know what I'm saying? Right. Right? But I felt so bad that it gave her some kind of anguish. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that that was inflicted on her. I'm not going to do it again. You know what was funny? Is that I was so mad that this is how hip-hop I am. I'm going to tell you. Like people say, how hip-hop are you? I got caught and had to go back. A letter was going to my old earth and everything. But I still had to go get a record. Right. So I went to another <laughs> store and bought a record. Right. The album I bought, which I think is a great, I think it's a classic. I bought The Coup. Remember The, the Coup? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. The Coup's third album, which is my favorite album of theirs. Mm -hmm. Steal this album. Mm. <laughs> the, the, the book steal this book i'm right. going through and i'm like i steal i see the album called steal this album i said oh first, shit i said should i should i try again yeah. <laughs> all i knew is that somehow i had to leave with that album because there's no way i get caught and then i see that album again right That's right you know? right and I was like, okay i'm gonna buy this shit though but but the knowledge that was in that album was, was yo, tremendous. that album had the lyrics written in it you know what i'm saying right Right. It, yo, it blew me away. It blew me away because I had bought the Coup albums, but I never listened like that. Right, right. We be hating on like Parliament samples like that when you right, use right. Parliament sample, hand clap snares. I'm like, well, whatever. Right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. So I listened and I, yo, I was loving it. Though. I was like, yeah, yo, it's so, crazy. so so deep, man. So yeah, dope. This so is dope. crazy. But, no. but when oh, when uh, I wanted to ask you, right? Like, so when you made that transition, getting into uh, uh, from like you know writing to doing like you know the power right show, radio shows, and diff different things like that, yeah. uh, what like how, what did you have to do to prepare for that transition? Was you just taking what your knowledge and how you how uh, your your journalistic right. style and your writing style and just transferred that to to right. a to an auditory verbal 
Well, here's, uh, this, here's how I made the Power Ride show, right? The Power Ride show had to have exhibitions of the skill of creativity that I have, right? right? It also had to have my interviewing ability and it also had to have my ideas about the music embedded right. throughout, you know what I'm saying? Right. And, um, so one of those things was to make an intro that shows what I'm about. So the in, the long intro of the hip hop writer is a creator composing mm -hmm. understanding words of, you know, and when I go through that whole intro, you know what I mean? That's what describe is describing me. And what I would do is I would read pieces of my work, you know, uh, select poems that are extracted out of my work. Right. You know I mean? And then I would, and then the feature interviews would just be like just formatting them for conversation, which was, I was very adept at doing, mm -hmm. very adept at doing because I had already done radio before. So it was more like getting back in the bicycle. You know what I'm saying? Right. It was more like right. getting back into it. Right. You know what I mean? So it wasn't really a problem. You know what I'm saying? It yeah. wasn't really a problem, you know, at all. Easy know? transition. And also wanted to, to ask you, um, when uh, when you became a fire percenter and what, how did that, um, how did that basically change your life and, and, and uh, you know, the enlightenment that was, uh, that was upon you once you made that, that decision? Mm. The enlightenment part is that everything I said before I felt was wrong. You know what I'm saying? About what I thought humanity was, what I thought this was, you know what I'm saying? Um, but getting the knowledge of self just answered everything I thought I was um, responding to my ego. But as far as responding to um, who I truly am, it always made perfect sense. So a lot of my mission changed. Um, the, a lot of my mission in hip hop was to embed my pieces with the idea that Puerto Ricans did have some foundation in, 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 in it. Mm -hmm. As I continue to go on is to show that Puerto Ricans like myself, like if you don't think Puerto Ricans do anything, you just, you just consume some hip hop from a Puerto Rican because right. this piece of art is from that. That was a lot of my early goals. A lot of my future goals become just expressing that, that not so much that the gods exist or that I think that the original man is God, right. but also the insights that I get from studying that knowledge. In other words, how to put my understanding on page, you know what I'm saying? And then all the formats, because now the formats extend because like working with you brothers, it extends to the spoken word. It extends to not just the books and, and, and the right. articles, you know what I mean? Right. Not just the lectures, because a lot of my life is really formatting what I think about things, my understanding of things into different formats, you know? And a lot of it becomes a little, it seems natural, but only because I, I literally have thousands of hours. So if someone tells me to speak about my views, they come out smooth because I've been teaching since 2000. So I've been holding at least a three hour course every single Thursday for the last 21 years. You know what I'm saying? Amazing. And if Amazing. you go back through all of them, there's only about, I've averaged 50 weeks a year. You know what I'm saying? Just multiply the amount of hours of speaking in front of people that you don't know, people that you do know, uh, merging the two, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? All of these kind of things. I become very comfortable talking in front of people. You know what I'm saying? And expressing myself, you know? Yeah just trying to have that convey itself, you know what I'm saying? Convey itself into a piece, you know what I mean? So right. like, sometimes the transition is more so in the freedoms of it. Like if I do a creative piece, like with you guys, it's more about reminding myself, I don't have to be that articulate. I don't have to, like I did some stuff with Thurston. He was like, listen, don't be so, don't right. be so big words and stuff. You know what I mean? So then right, I, got you. I try to remember like who's the audience, you know what I'm saying? Right, right. Who's because the target audience that you're A lot of hip hop for me, like mm -hmm. when I do things hip hop, a lot of hip hop for me is I have always embraced the things I don't understand in hip hop. You're right. So people like RZA, people like Killer, like Kill, if we want to talk people now, Killer Priest rhymes, it blows me away because I have to rewind. Mm -hmm. I have to try to understand where his references are. You know right. what I'm saying? 
right. the depth of his visualizations. You know, like Definitely. that intrigues me. You know what I'm saying? Definitely. And so I don't mind putting people on that kind of ride and stuff. You know what I mean? Right. But um, you know, it's really about the it's really about expressing myself in all these formats. You know, because when I was young, I didn't. After a while, I didn't want to be an MC because my problem was I actually don't want to perform. I have something to say, but I don't want to perform it in front of you. I don't want my understanding to be valid because I perform it in front of you. Right, to put the stamp on it, right. That was augmented because I meet so many MCs that are way and beyond. So it's almost like I've never really played ball, but I spend my time with the NBA guys all the time. You After a while, you don't want to shoot hoops, though. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? Right. And that's what it was for me. You know, so that's why MC never really took. If I do stuff like that now, it's because now I'm older and it's, it sounds crazy, but I'm enjoying it more. Right. So now I'm enjoying like, yo, I don't have to. And a real talk for me, because I'm so competitive with it. I can say I do something at a high, at the highest level in hip hop. So if I do something else in hip hop, I can have more fun with it because it's okay. I don't have to be the best on the right. mic. Right. I know but, what I'm great at in hip hop. So sometimes the other things I do now, I have more fun with it. So, so like, you know, for example, um, the work that you did with the leftovers, right? Right. Uh, it, to me is extraordinary, incredible because it adds such um, uh, incredible layer and, gives it it gives it such power and so, and so to speak power right power rule it gives it such power <laughs> right it gives it such power as far as like not just class but like i said it's power your words is setting the precedent you know of you opening the album uh the words is setting the precedent of where what the mind frame is that this is not your your run of the run of your run of the mill hip-hop that this is soulful. That this is this is this is cultural. This is about the people. This is about you know uh, moving forward. You you set that set that precedent in that. So it's like you know you you necessarily don't have to uh, have have lyrics as they say or be be the rapper to still convey uh, in a in a auditory way. Um, <laughs> you know, your message. And I mean, because it got to me, it got to me immediately, you know? And when, uh, when I had the good fortune of, um, Marcano Paolo, you know, um, mentioning you and, and, and letting me hear it, I was like, holy shit. I was like, yo, this is crazy. This is dope. This is what it should be. You know what I mean? Yeah. This is what it should be. You know what I mean? So, um, yeah, I mean, you, you, you got, you, you got that, that, uh, like I said, you ain't got to be in the booth, you know, spitting the 16, but you can always, you know, because now, like I said, hip hop is open like that. You know, it's it's meant to be like that. It's meant to be, you know, uh, to have many different expressions and many different, yeah, yeah. you know, uh, uh, emotions. Yeah. And like, it feels even more open because we do anything, you know, right. it's why I always had so much love for Ka, you know what I mean? Besides mm-hmm. being a great brother with me, you know, mm-hmm. like. And he doesn't do any interviews anymore. And so I can say that in his career, I'm the one that got to interview him the most. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. And, and and let the people know who you're talking about. Right. I'm talking about Ka, Brownsville Ka. You know, he released that was right. Grief Pedigree. He, Martyr's Reward came out this year. Mm-hmm. All these great albums. Like, if you go back, the work he does with Rock Marciano. And right. one of the one of the things I that he inspired me was that he could just make these things and just make them. You know what I'm saying? He doesn't even like to perform his music. Like he just wants it to be heard. So it got me to thinking like, if I make music and I'm part of music, I could make music that can just be listened to. It doesn't have to be performed because that's not really where my, where I hit you. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You know, like my whole life, I hit people where they're, when they're alone, you know what I'm saying? The words I have for them hit them when they're alone. You know, the yeah, the performance the performance part I think uh, comes from um, from uh, the artist chasing the bag from you know wanting to get that money get out there get on the road and perform and yeah, do all absolutely. that and stuff like that and you know you got uh, many different artists and some do it that way and some not you know that they don't care financially about it but they're not like you said 
this I want my music to be out there and hey. interpret it that right. particular way, not me yeah. enforcing yeah. it through a performance. Absolutely, you know, and obviously over the years I've had more joy actually sharing it outward, performing it outward, you know what I'm saying? Right. All those things come into play, you know, right. but that's where my mind was when I started doing stuff like that. I was like, I don't know, you know what I'm saying? Right. But um, it's funny that after I did that leftovers for the, you know, that, that first Rogue One, so many artists have asked me to speak and do what I do on their records, you know what I'm saying? Right. And it, it becomes fun where like now, I'm making a short EP of my own where I'm just throwing out my own shit. You know what I mean? And then no, I'm adding no. on to the things that you're doing. You know what I mean? And um, I'm just doing it for fun. You know, when no. you hear it though, it'll just be stuff that he's like, what would be the define? Now, when I look into music, there, there will be things in it that someone will say like, listen, no one really has ever said that. And that's always been the key to my writing. And my and what I say, I always have the ability to say something somebody would never have said. Man. You know what I mean? And that's and, and amazing. For that, yeah. You know, and 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 that's what it is. You know, like and, and you know, the leftover is such a fun crew to be a part of because definitely to me, you know, like we talk about gentrification, right? I don't see it as like we're trying to get rid of gentrification. We could just be the way I actually see it, though, is like you're in my fucking way, and I'm doing shit, right? Your gentrification right. is getting in the way of my expansion. Right. This is about right. my expansion. Right. I'm, this whole shit is going to expand the way we do it, not the way you come in and and border us. You know what I mean? Right. And and so when it comes to doing it, though, it has that freedom to it. You know what I mean? So it's like yeah. being part of leftovers is like a fight for freedom. You know what I'm saying? Right. Don't. Don't, right. don't inhibit. Don't say we can't. We got to live like this, like that. You come in here. You better get with the culture. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and it's like it's uh that's one thing definitely. You know, being a part of the leftovers, and and seeing you know, you know, being a part of a brotherhood. You know what I mean? And seeing like you know different people that's part of um that's part of the crew, doing their things. Different artists, different mind frames, but definitely we all have a you know um a similar belief of um of how this shit goes as far as like, you know, having, having to change what, what a lot of these, um, colonizers and, and, and evil fucking spirits, what they're doing to the people and, 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 right, right. and us trying to change that. You know what I mean? Yeah. If it's, if yeah. it's through anything, if it's through, through information, if it's through music, if it's through fighting gentrification, cause gentrification is more of a broader term now for me. It's a, it's the gentrification of 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 a mind frame, a, a gentrification of a of a of a culture, gentrification of of a person. It's just not a neighborhood no more. You know what right. I mean? And and that's what makes the leftovers so much, well, so, you know, so important. Is that you know? hip hop has survived its recordings over forty years, right. and this decade is exactly the type of decade where all the other musics absolutely would already have diluted versions being accepted as it mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. and so what we do though is really a fight for freedom like yo this is the way we do the culture and it extends to the individual neighborhoods we are in you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. so like yo you want to live here then if you even intend to even deal with what we deal with right do it you know what i'm saying right and How the thing is it's like you know it's blatant that's why I like you know they got terms systematic racism and all that shit and yeah, it's blatant. It's true, and they know that is that that is true, and that is blatant. It's just us as a people, you know what I mean. And I hate to use this term about the uh, that I'm about to use, but us becoming woke, us us opening our fucking minds and our fucking okay. ears, and 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 knowing exactly what's going on 360 around you, around your surroundings, making that assessment. Once you truly know what's going around you. Uh, uh, you know, 360 and then making a true assessment, then you can move forward, then you can do what mm -hmm. you have to do because what they're trying to do, they're, 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 they're changing their agendas are, are destroying everything, everything, yeah. mentally, physically, everything. And it's either you're going to become a slave and succumb to it or you're going to fucking fight to the very last, especially if you have family, friends or anybody that you love. You're gonna fight like hell 
to not become enslaved into their agendas and to their their evil fucking energy. You know what I mean? Right, right. You yeah, know, you know, hey, yeah. you know the the you know, it sounds like a generic answer that everybody would assume that I would say and they're correct. Mm -hmm. But to me, like when the reason terms like woke can get so abused, right? And it's it's almost not even in our lexicon anymore. Like our people don't use that no more. Right. Like that right. really building because it has been co-opted. And right. woke means that you get awake to the knowledge of self. And right. I think one of the problems is that people don't have a knowledge of self. Like they'll say they, they skip the universities they needed to go to. They went to college and they got some higher learning, but they didn't get any of the street knowledge or any of the street history where they try to bring back the teachings that they got from college. Right. So their perceptions of what is racism, what can we do to combat it? It doesn't have a context to go back in. And look, one of the things that almost destroyed hip hop was the lack of sampling. And people take it as just a musical terror, but mm -hmm. our people's history is one where we are told not to go back. And that is one of the reasons why we can't accept the past. You see what I'm saying? And say, I am this. To say what you are, you have to know where you came from. Right, right, you know absolutely. And hip hop, aside from being the first of the black diaspora being made of different cultures, it also was doing something that other genres didn't do overtly. And that's go back, you know, go back and then get something. So when you get that crate, to me, that was like history. You know, when I was growing up, like we weren't, we were supposed to assimilate as much as possible. So like sounds of music, old stuff, we're supposed to get rid of that's, you know, that's that's black music too. The way we right. talk about negatively about salsa was the same, just as hip hop. Right. Like, you don't do that, do American music, pop music, whatever like that, well, like that. And I'm like, nah, man. We got to go back. So like, even as a late teen, in my late teens, I was going back to learn about salsa too. I didn't know any of it like that. Right. right. And what it used to inspire me always as a child was going to my grandma's house and just seeing the pictures in the crates. And it's funny because, you know, kids, we're always into cartoons. Um, one of the major groups and my favorite big band group is Sonora Ponceña. You know what I mean? Ponceña because they're from Ponce, right? Mm -hmm. And all their album covers are artwork of like conquistadors and like these cool drawings and shit. And I was like, yo, right. these drawings are so dope. And you know, when you see a cool drawing, you're like, oh, this record must sound dope because the drawing right. is fire. Right, right. definitely. Yeah. You know what I mean? But it was like, I don't touch that, don't touch that. Well, that's what happened though. Now I get into digging in the crates, I start buying everything and I want to hear everything. I want to hear the context of, because digging in the crates has us also figuring out the context to why album covers look the way they do. Right then, yeah. You know right, right. We start getting a history of like, why was it like this? Why was it like that? And we start to realize the value of history. You know, and I don't think that without hip hop, I don't think I have such a value of history as I do. You know what I'm saying? That's right. such great, like, wow, such incredible music came out in the past. Right, right. That is just mind blowing. So there must have been other things that are hidden from us. If the music that just came out 20 years ago is hidden from us. Right. Imagine all the history that's way back that we don't know about. I mean, it's just. I mean, that, I, I, I'm discovering. Right? I'm discovering music that that are from uh, that are from like the 1960s, right? Yeah. And it's like coming from Italy, Italy 1960s, right? I and know. and it's like a collection where it says Italy 1960s uh, jazz funk collection and i'm like there was a jazz funk collection in italy in 1960s oh, the crates, you know what I mean? the crates out there is, is bananas you never stop collecting you know what i'm yeah, saying no. yeah it's just never. it's beautiful it's beautiful i have so much shit that's collected that people have never mind that it's mind-blowing you know what I mean? right right you know like people all oh, digging in the crates they love the horns but they didn't even mind salsa records and that's all they do is play horns you know what mm -hmm, i'm saying mm-hmm Right, and it's like, right. yo, like there's so much great stuff, and just just hearing the music as a whole is, is right. amazing. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like some of the famous albums where famous samples are coming from. A lot of times, the rest of the album is fire. Mm. 
from these yeah. classic albums. With yeah. Oh, that's where that break yeah. comes. That's where that, and uses it's so whole much other shit like, on there. So much other know, things. Yeah. Know, the scripts, yeah. like, you know what I mean? Like, uh, people go, oh, Al Green. But like, yo, this, the whole Al Green collection is crazy. Right. Oh, yeah, of course. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Sure. Like, or every Willie Mitchell drum that ever existed. You know what I'm saying? Like, whether it's what is, tools, you know, all that kind of shit. What is your, now, think about it for a second. Because we're, you know, we're recording. We good. Think about it for a second. What is your, and I'm just going limit to li- limit them to five. What is your top five albums? And what is your top five MCs? You mean in hip hop albums? Hip hop albums. It gets ruined. I can't say. I have to plead the fifth. Gotcha. Because I feel I'm the one that's covering this era. And I feel like I'm the definitive person. And so I, I'll i tell you, I would tell you favorite what my favorite records would be off air. But to the public, I never tell people what my favorite records are. You know, Ooh, like this year, I have a favorite record this year so far. But I've only told my twin brother what that record is. You know what I'm right. saying? Right. And it's because I want people to only know the reasons. Like I always call it the earth, wind and fire, the reasons. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. (laughs) No, I I just want people to have the reasons that I gave. Right. They understand why I pick certain things. There are clues. If you read my work and you see, like, I wrote this much about a guy and then I wrote this much about a guy, then you know which one I really like. You know, like, you know, I don't give grades. I don't do none of that shit. Right. Right. Ratings and stuff. Right. I could do five. Well, if I did all time MCs, right? Well, like favorite all time MCs, right? Um, and I wouldn't include anybody from like this era, even though some of them do match up, and I love them. You know what I'm saying? Even mm-hmm. from the 2000s, there's some people that I love them. You know, and um, I definitely would have to say like favorites would have to be. Um, it, it sounds crazy, but it's because of the depth that he came with in 1997. Is risen, right. you know right. what I mean? Um, Karis one, rock him, the two absolute go candidates. You know what I'm saying? I think that they're the only two MCs that have multiple classic albums and that they pioneer things that are absolutely necessary. You know, right. um, right. I give you a bonus here because it's so, this is already scripted. My, my Mount Rushmore is like, um, is like a religious, is my religious symbol. So you see right. this, this way because it's up, down this way the spiritual reality the artistic reality is rakim the depth of all the content and the formats for albums is karis one all the mm-hmm. techniques everything mm-hmm. the range of content is my chart this way is cool g rap chuck d hmm. and then that circle merges because all of them have different things the techniques of cool g rap you know what i'm saying the techniques of karis one the writing techniques of KRS One and Rock Him, you know what I'm saying? Right. The depth of songwriting that and anthemic writing, and you know, with black music, being able to write an anthem is part of the. It yeah. does music doesn't continue. To me, Chuck D is the best at that. Oh you yeah, know? without question. But of course, like you know, Run DMC is right there. You know, like yeah. of course, people that write anthems. But that's my Mount Rushmore. But my personal favorites is like the ones I always ended up listening to. Was Karis one, Rock Him, um, Cool G Rap. I was obsessed with Cool G Rap. Like, these, right. It's yeah, very, was, yeah. Who you know wasn't? I mean? um, G Rap. Um, honestly, it would have to be Tupac. Right. And then Guru. Mm, mm, and these, that, are, yeah. these are not because I think they're better than others, but because they're the ones I listen to for, I like, Guru, I listen to for the, his ethos. The way that he behaved is the way that I compose myself. Right. And because he's from Boston and became part of Brooklyn, I always related to that being part of a the outside, even right. though I was in Brooklyn. You know what I'm saying? Right, right, exactly. Right. I always related to that. You know what I'm saying? Right. Aside from everything, he did everything dope. The way he dressed, the way he spoke, yeah. the coolest. Everything Guru did is th- him- that was what we me and my brother, that's what we God emulated. Bless. We used to be like, yo, Guru wore it like this. So you got yeah. This. Right, right. Yo, right. everything like you right. know. Definition of cool. Like if yeah. he was still alive today, remembered in perfection, Guru, he would have to be an honorary low life because the way he dressed. Oh yeah. 
yo. Yeah. But um, his ethos, his mentality, I consider him to me the heart of hip hop. And Tupac was to me that soul, you know what I'm saying? Um, the way he expressed himself, you know? I said RZA because of the depth, but it also would actually branch to like Ray, Ghost, and Jizza because they they really inspired me ridiculously, you know what I mean? Right. Um, Jizza's line stayed in my head when I got back into writing because he said, um, in beneath the song Beneath the Surface, the second verse, he says, um, I forgot what he says. No, not Beneath the Surface. That's the album. Breaker, Breaker. Mm -hmm. right? Oh, Breaker, Breaker. Right, right. That's um, that shit. I love that. that. I love that song. And I, I love that whole album because Jesus, you know, he's one of the greatest. But definitely. He said something here. I'm going to say it here, right? He said, The immortality of my fame is the measure of others' torture burnt off of, from a flaming author, the falconer who flies enough birds for the chase, strictly excel in what is excellence and grace. But here's the, the line that impacted my whole writing life after that. Mm -hmm. When I got knowledge, I realized I have to keep going. He said, the significance was not the vulgar applause of interest, but the feeling that exit completion of a sentence. After that, I just wrote, mm. I just, just write, mm. you know what I'm saying? Mm. And it stayed in my head so long that it's like the most important ver line beautiful are in my life beautiful and 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 your interpretation of it my interpretation was it like as i learn who i am just right right and it will come out the creativity right. one will come out and that right. it's okay to learn earth shattering things you know what i'm saying right right exactly and, exactly and that's how beautiful. i dealt with the knowledge because it was so much i was learning at one time you know and that's saying? the that is what i'm talking about the beauty of words the beauty of communication oh, the beauty of hip-hop yeah, is, is you know, all, all, and, and, you know right. being God, like, yeah, that core of the woo, you know, Rizza, Jizza, Ghost, Ray, and then all the other woo, right? It's so influential to the way they write, to the way they act, the way I couple words, the way that they abstract them, all of those kind of things, you know what I mean, right? Right, that Supreme Client tells one of the great works of poetry of all time, right? Without question, and and all of these writers, they, they blow me away. You know what I'm saying? They blow me away. I was just, yo, I, I be, you know, I do, I'm always doing training videos with the music and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I very rarely do it with hip hop because I get stuck listening. Right, right, right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And right. I was working out with Rakim though, and I got through the video. But then after the training session, I, I ended up sitting down and I'm just listening. I was like, yo, I can't believe he wrote that back then. Right, right. You start hearing over and over again certain you know things that, like, way right. Perfect. Right, right. You Beautiful. made up ton of rhymes. You cut. I know. And I'm a kid. I never thought, but I was like the most coolest thing. And when I started to really think that hip hop MCs had something to say, was I start? I I saw this video many times, and I just whatever. And I was li really listening one day, and I was like, he's sitting, he's leaning, he's like, I ain't no joke. I used right. to like smoke, and I was and I was like, yo, that is the coolest fucking thing ever. Like you just right. your words, right, are the most coolest thing. And I was like, yo. You know what I mean? So fucking cool, and and laid it laid the blueprint out for for the for blueprint. everything. These you know? guys, uh, you know, mind blowing. You know, so when I write, most many of the authors that inspire me are those MCs, not necessarily right. the authors. Even though I read, I read a lot of books. You know what I'm saying? Like I tell mm -hmm. my students, like since I started to in 2003, I started to write down how many books I read, so I could see what I'm reading, how I read, what type of book uh, books I'm reading, and what type of authors I tend to to seek and subject so I could vary them and be very right. right. Since 2004, I have read at least 52 books every year. Every single year, I have read at least 52 books. You know. Oh, oh my God, that you know is me? that is that is great. Oh. So so let me change that up then. So, top five books you would recommend? There are top five books that I recommend because I besides read, besides your your I, own, <laughs> of course, yeah. There's certain, get into that. there's certain books I read every year. So yeah. the one book I give to everybody is As a Man Thinking by James Allen. You know what I'm saying? Um, the Art of Peace by Moria Yoshiba. Uh, the Tao of Kung Fu by Bruce Lee. Um, the Tao Te Ching by Lao Tzu. A lot of them are martial arts books because they're books that you have to read again and again. You know what I'm saying? Um, how many did I name here? I mean, one, two, uh, four, four, four. Uh, four. If I name five, it depends on the person, though. But I, I, you know, it is not the greatest read, but I always go back to messages to the black man. You know what I'm right, saying? Right, right. 
because I feel that like that's one workout that everybody needs. Right. Man. Right. If you if you actually go under the study of 120, it it helps for you to understand it. Right. 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 That path. Um, there's a whole bunch of books that I read regularly every year or every two years. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And the ones mm -hmm. I mentioned, except for Message to the Black Man, I read those books once every year. You know. Right. Right. Huh? Now, what would would uh yeah and those that selection right there is is yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's a powerful selection you know what i mean uh mentioned with a lot of those is martial artists when did martial arts enter your life it was with the knowledge of self you know so the gods always had a culture the older gods always had a culture of training in karate and doing other things especially the ones from mecca manhattan mm -hmm. right and i'm from brooklyn but i went to learn in in Manhattan mm -hmm. at a law school in Mecca on 126th Street and 7th Avenue. So one day we're cleaning out the basement and I, uh, I'm, they, I'm, they, the God see I'm in pretty good shape. And my other peers, they go, yo, God, you should train in Kung Fu, man. And I'm like, nah, that's some crazy shit. I ain't doing no crazy kicks and no shit like that. You don't get mm -hmm. hurt like that. You know what I mean? I'm already, I'm, I'm about to be 25. So I'm like, damn, I'm too old for that shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. you know, and, um, they said, listen, you just come with us, you know, one day and you see what, if you like it, you know what I'm saying? And all the, uh, the gods of my peers, and they were all training with this brother named Seagung Bobby Lee Whitaker, who wasn't in our nation, but it's like an honorary 5%. Mm -hmm. And he was a black man, you know what I'm saying? A black man that survived the shooting to his head and survived, you know what I mean? So he had like, he has a, a hole in his head and everything. And, mm -hmm. and he had a limp because of it. And um, I went there one day and just like the way I got out self freely, he offered himself freely. And I was like, wow, you're going to teach me this freely? I better get my ass in gear. And I said, how do I learn to do this? And he was like, every day you do 20 minutes of Kung Fu, when you do your Kung Fu. And every time you come here, you just work hard. That's all I need you to do. You don't need to give me nothing. Just work hard. Yo, in my mind, I was like, say no more. You know what I mean? Mm, say yes. Right. Oh, I worked hard, as hard as I could. You know what I'm saying? And that's since then. The, the in December of 2000, I started that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, from 99 to 2000, so much things happened because in 1999, I went to a law school. The first day I took class, my enlightener, my teacher, he told me that if you keep on with this, you'll teach at this school. By April of 2000, I'm teaching at a law school and I start the course that I still teach today. By the full, by the, by the winter of that year, I start martial arts. You know what I'm saying? And What's funny, it has to do with hip-hop all the time because what got me to go first to the Seagung Bobby wasn't because the gods told me. I said, okay, I'll think about it. Right. Me and my brother went to see Ghost Dog. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I was like, I, here's my hip-hop mind. It wasn't that he, a black man was doing kung fu. It was that RZA made a kung fu score that blew me away. Right. Right. So I was like, exactly. yo, I was like, yo, in my mind, I'm like, I have music to train with. Right now, yeah, it's, it's the dope. I with the music, like I got, I got a music score I could train with. Like, it, you have to do kung fu now. Right, right. <laughs> it's only right. right. Hip hop does it. The Wu does it. You know, like in the, in the way they encoded their music, the gods mm -hmm. have offered it to me. I'm like, yo, I have to do this. And I'm telling everybody, like, yo, I gotta go. I, I'm gonna do kung fu. You wanna come? He's like, nah. <laughs> and right. from there it was done I, I fell in love with it I fell in love with it you know what I'm saying right. I will tell you that when people say it saved their life though I'm not saying it saved my life because it centered me and shit like that gotcha. I'm saying it saved my life though because I use this shit to stay alive right you know what I'm saying right. I right. really stayed alive using it you know right. Right. and you know I can't thank you know see young Bobby enough you know what I'm saying like you know, Salute. like it, he didn't just give me a way to save my life. He gave me a, a, a way to physically express this lifestyle of being the true and living God. Right. And now right. I'm blessed because I have a life where I have so many ways to express myself, martial arts, writing, you know, the spoken word, all of these ways to express yeah. myself. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you look at it, you have, you have knowledge of self, right? And then you have self-discipline, which uh, is also enforced through martial arts. Absolutely. So I mean that 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 that's well, it, you know that's powerful combination there. It absolutely is. You know what I'm saying. And 
you know, it's a jo- it's a joy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's it's yeah. a joy. You know what I mean? Uh, I'll just try to have fun with all of this. You know what I mean? Because that's one thing I I didn't. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it was, that's what it's about. It was so hard to, you know, imagine like if you're an MC and you just can't find a place where you could record the songs that you wanted to say. Right. Every time you hand it in, you know, they bleep out whole bars. Right. That, that right. was my that was my experience as a writer. And then you find the format, but then let's say like if you get a record, you only have, you only could do two songs. And then you're a guy like, I have years worth of like thoughts and ideas that need to be, right. I have bars and bars, you know, that's how it ended up being. <laughs> that's why there's such an explosion when I, when I write, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And like at the end of 2000, at the end of the 2010s, I wrote the filtered reel. The filtered reel essays from the invisible renaissance because i try to say let me put a book together that will encapsulate the first 10 years of this renaissance okay you know what i mean and that's what that book became and you know af- after that what i'm doing what i'm doing now the books i have coming out now is immediately i'm getting out the reel of 2021 so right. instead of just a best of list this is a bracketing where i've made up all of these different ciphers like um, burgeoning builders, I call it, like up and comings, um, right. 5% MCs, like the ones that I went and talked to and say, yo, this guy really deals with this. Like not people that, they, oh, he sounds like he sounds like 5%. No, I'm telling you. Yeah. You know I'm saying? Like I'm documenting this correctly. I'm, I, yo, like for example, Killy Shoot is dope. He's out of mass. I don't, I never met him. I went in contact with him and said, yo, you, you the true living guy? Like you deal with 120? He said, yeah, I got to deal with this, that, and the other. Okay. Now, you know what I'm saying? Like, I mm-hmm. actually go and ask them. You know what I'm saying? Right, so right, right, right. Like, who's the 5% of that rhymes? Facts. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. And separate the queens because the women deserve that highlight, though. Um, the the crime rhyme specialist, the boom bap guys, everything. And then overlapping them. So some guys end up being in different categories. Right, right. Because hip-hop is not one thing. You're not right, one it's thing. definitely. It's many. So yeah. it can show you that. You could read the book and go, well, I like this type of shit. I'm going to go with this category. Mm -hmm. I don't want to hear progressives because I have a progressives category. I don't want to hear people without no drums and no shit like that. Right. Right? Okay. But if people want to hear the next shit, they go, okay, they go down here. They might fuck with Al Davino, SD Nack. You know what I mean? Right. And it's it's also a great reference for, like, those who may not know a lot of these artists to go check those artists. Toast. It's good. It's gonna. It or it's gonna be done. And it's gonna cover over three hundred albums. You know what I'm saying? And when is uh um when is the book coming out? This book is coming out as soon as I can, like uh, between mid December and and January. All right. You know so it's almost. It's almost there. Oh, so if I'm trying to cover everything that comes out, I'm obviously not because I want to get it to press and get it published first. Right. So we'll miss some things, but it'll have that cutoff date in the book. You know what I'm saying? Right. And uh, once again, let them know the name of the book. It's going to be called The Real of 2021. Okay. You know, it's going to, it's going to, yo, it's crazy. It's crazy. You know what I mean? And yeah. because I did The Real of 2020, right? that was only an ebook. This book is going to include The Real of 2020 in the back. So this book, so far, is going to cover all the great hip hop that has been released as best as I can. We all miss things. Right. But the most right. complete that you could find in these first two years of this decade will be this book. You know what I'm saying? And then I have another book who I got my my man Peku doing the design. I took a lot of my poetry, not all of it, that has been embedded inside pieces and articles that I've wrote over the years. Right. And I've extracted those poems and named them, giving you the original names that they were in my head, mm-hmm. and made a poetry book called Art on Art. So this is basically the book of art of my element. Like, what is the artistic art of my element? It right. is this poetry as an example. So you see the poetry that I've written in all these reviews, album reviews, and features and interviews, mm-hmm. extracted, named, and then put into there. So it's about like, it's over, it's easily over 100 poems, man. Oh, Maybe about God. 150 poems and shit. You know what I mean? Na- name each of your, uh, for the people, name each one of your books. Name uh, the books so that have come out though. The only one in print right now is the filtered real essays from the Invisible Renaissance. Right. The other two 
the Sunius Crates and the Reel of 2020 are both ebooks. Right. And right. you could get the filtered reel on Amazon, or you could contact me at sunyas97 at gmail.com, or just contact me, DM me at sunyas on IG or sunyas7, the number seven, on Twitter. And if you DM me, I'll send you, you know, I'll, I'll send you uh, uh, autographed copies. You know what I'm saying? And and about your, your classes, if people want to take your the classes. classes I, yeah, the classes I teach at a law school in Mecca are every Thursday from five o'clock to eight o'clock, right? Um, at a law school in Mecca, Eastern Standard Time. And I also broadcast them over YouTube live. So if people go to my YouTube channel, Sunya7, and subscribe and get the notice, you'll be noticed. Because if I have students in the classroom that I'm focusing on, I don't broadcast until a little bit later. Mm -hmm. So you get the notice, though. But I always broadcast some or all of the class. So right. And... And just uh, in a tidbit in your classes, you know, uh, just a little uh, tidbit of what you may be, you know, what you cover in, uh, in some class, of your classes. The classes to get the knowledge of self as we, the nation of God's and earth teacher, the 5% nation of God's and earth teacher. So why do we say there's no mystery God being or, or, or you know, uh, energy force or being in the universe? What do we mean by supreme mathematics and alphabet? And how do we describe our reality and the nature of us by that? Um what are the ways that we, what are the reasons and scientific approach that we take to saying that we are the true and living gods and the black woman is the true and living earth? You know, so our spirituality, but also helping the people with how we deal with things. You know what I'm saying? Right. So not everyone and is that comes to my classes, you have to be this. If you were that, you would be that. My right. class is to find out what we teach and what I am teaching and you try to learn all of the insights that we have about our spirituality and also the science to our spirituality. You know what I mean? And um, that's always free of charge. And my, my, my classroom comes with a big digital curriculum that includes access to my digital library, depending on the subjects that students is covering and everything. And I'll just say this though, my digital library of books is easily about 5,000 books. So mm. Um, mm. Beast, you know what I mean? So I, I told, I told you, toes that I used to take cassettes and vinyl, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cassettes and CDs, you know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. Now I take different things, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I got you. I take different things, and then that way, because if, if I get these books, I can give them to everybody, you know what I'm saying? And now yeah. I can teach, and I don't have to worry about getting a book back because I give you your own. You know what I'm saying? Definitely. So these hey. books that I said, if you're in my class, all these books I give it to you. Right. You, and, you and, get as a man thinketh immediately from me. Message to the black man. The the books that I had a part in editing, the knowledge of self anthology, um, you get that immediately from me. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. Other books that are essential, if you're a five percenter that I edited, I don't give out because they're not I didn't author them. So like Starmel's Righteous Way trilogy of books, mm -hmm. um, those to me are the best introduction to our nation if you want to read a book. And I edited all of those three of those. And um those books are by Star Mel a lot. And if you don't want to go to a class and you want to read about the nation, mm -hmm. go to go to Star Mel's Righteous Way, the Righteous Way trilogy. Three books, read them in a row. Awesome. You know what I mean? And and once again, if they want to take a class, uh, how would they do that again? All they have to do is go to a law school or they can email me, sunias97 at gmail. Because if they're far away, I'll introduce them into the cipher, uh, uh, the digital cipher. So that way... I tell them what to do to make it valuable. You know what I mean? And, and um, if you're just around a law school in Mecca on a Thursday night, five o'clock, you go in there. Just go yeah, in. I'll be definitely. there. A law school is in Harlem. Harlem, you know, 120th yeah. Street, 7th Avenue. You know definitely. What I mean? You know what I mean? And the thing is, is, is to uh, all those that's listening, you know, especially, um, you know, my young brothers, you know, and some of the older brothers, but anybody that might be uh, – might be playing around and toying around with ignorance every day in your life. You know what I mean? Where it's, you know, it's, uh, it just happens constantly. It's a sick loop of ig ignorance that you trapped up in your life. Yeah. Try something new. If you're going to try any fucking thing new, you know what I mean? Then do that. Try to get knowledge yourself. It's not just a bunch of blah, blah, blah. This, 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 and that. It's not for the life. fact that, for the right. fact that, uh, they say it's a law school and you you concentrating on on the school aspect and not the law aspect of it. No, 
take all that. Challenge yourself. Challenge yourself to be better. Challenge yourself to know who you are. Challenge yourself to know where you come from and how great your culture and your people are. Challenge yourself because where we going right now and the path that we leading, that you have too many of these fools that don't don't have knowledge yourself, don't have one ounce of knowledge yourself. That's right. And and we're 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 eating ourselves alive. We're killing ourselves. We're That's we're right. we're we're losing the fight. We're we're making ourselves extinct. And the one of the only well, yeah, I will go out and say it's the only weapon that will stop our extinction is knowledge yourself. That is the only weapon. That will stop always, the extinction. It's always the knowledge toast, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I teach martial arts, so I would say the your first weapon to develop is your eyes, though. Right, you right, understand? absolutely. Knowledge yourself is always how you, you know what I mean? Right. If you want to learn how to get the right, true information, the truthful idea that you have within you out, you got to realize that's knowledge. So you got to learn how to do the knowledge, you know what I'm saying? And you, and, and you can do this in your home. You know what I mean? After you know, you, you God forbid, if you don't shot up a motherfucker and you feeling guilty, then that guilty is a calling card for you to get knowledge yourself. That's if you true. don't went out there and done did some dumb shit, you don't hit your girl or hit your baby, God forbid, and that's you feeling guilty and oh, that guilt the, set in, that's then that yeah, goal. that's the that's the path that's of going right. to knowledge yourself, and yeah. you can find that with Sunnis. You can that's find that. That's a great that. point, Toast, because I don't teach choir boys. You know what I'm saying? Right. You right. know. I'm teaching all types of people that done all types of things. You know what I'm saying? Right. I say this like as a teacher, I there's no way I could have lived all of the things that people come and tell me and ask me about. It's because I learned to have empathy toward all situations. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And that's what a, that's what we do. That's what we do. When we say five percent, it's not because we're standing above and everybody's below us, though. It's only because we're people that are willing to share what we learn. Right. You know what I mean? So. You know, like it's like some people don't know how to balance the ethos and the pathos of their life or pathos of their life. And I think with knowledge itself and especially the way you explain it in your class and how you you uh, you teach this in a very human way, in a very, very uh, understandable way that they can balance the ethos and the pathos uh, uh, pathos in their life. You know what I mean? Because that's what's going on. They don't. It's, it's unbalanced and people don't know. Uh, 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 how to how how to go about life because it's very unbalanced. And once you have knowledge yourself and and that and strength and focus, then it becomes way way easier, way easier. Yeah, toast. Word is bond. Word is bond. Yeah. But yo, yeah, man. Appreciate you, toast, man. Oh man, this was y'all. Yeah. This was the best, y'all. To 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 my brother, my leftover brother. I'm so 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 honored to be uh, in a collective with you. You know what I mean? Yeah, so man. honored to be in a collective with you. This was way overdoing this is the first believe me the first of many interviews um that i want to do with you if it's nothing oh, oh yeah uh, yeah, yeah. you know if if, if 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 it's nothing else i would like you to come by and um definitely drop um you know uh tidbits on certain books and certain knowledge that you think should be passed to the people you know what i mean because um through That's through my up. platform i mean um that is that is always needed, and I'm always here to pass the good energy and good information to the people. You know what I mean? But um, let them know, man, about the podcast real quick before you get out of here about the Power Right Show. You go to S Street Media, S Street Media on the YouTube, and all the Power Right shows are there. You go to DJ Toshi, T O S H I, DJ Toshi dot Pot DJ Toshi Classic Storm dot Potomatic. Mm -hmm. Dot com and you can get all the DJ Toshi Classic Storm ep radio episodes that we've been doing. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. uh, yo, it's dope, man. It's dope. And look out for uh, for this Toshi leftover man. video. It's yo, coming out. The Rogue One video is still coming out. Ooh. You know what I mean? So um, look out for that. It features Sunez and his and and all his glory. <laughs> and uh, y'all gonna y'all y'all gonna really love that. It's uh, Power Rule and EQ lyrics. Power Rule and EQ lyrics. The leftovers Rogue One video and single coming out. It's on the leftovers engraved New York album. And um, yeah, I mean, uh, uh, Sunez has an incredible intro to that song. So oh, man, thank, thank you, you, thank you, Sunez, uh, oh, man. coming on. by, man. Uh, up? This, definitely, this is the Pinoy oh, podcast. You know what I mean? Peace to the gods and nerves out there. Stay, pros stay positive and uh, stay free. So, um, 